Oh, hello. Welcome to Husky Hefe's book club. Yeah, that's right. I started the book club. Why? Because I'm quarantined. Just like everybody else is. But it's a good time for us to do something valuable with ourselves. Not just talk. Not just social media all day. How about you pick up a book and read? So, with that being said, I'm going to jump right into it. The book that we have of subject is entitled Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Now, this book, a lot of people, um, a lot of investors say they picked up this book or read this book and it changed their lives. Even heard a guy, he was once locked up and read the book and all of a sudden he's like this stock market guru. But nevertheless, um, this book was recommended to me by some frat brothers way back when, but of course I was young and I didn't want to listen. So didn't really read it, but I found it uh, I found it on the bookshelf one day when I was at Books A Million. No free shout outs. I ain't sponsored by Books A Million, but Books A Million, I shop with you. Give me that endorsement. Yeah, so I came across it. And what I want us to do with this book club, with this, this being our first book, I want us to read this book. And what I'm gonna do as far as like Hefe's book club is I'm actually gonna come on here and summarize chapters, chapter by chapter. And in conjunction with this, I want us to go, I wanna do like a live video to where people can chime in and we can talk. And you know, everybody's free to free to join. And I'm gonna formulate questions so we have great dialogue. So hey, if you wanna get that cracking, stay tuned. Come on over, like, comment, subscribe, join the book club. But let's dive into chapter one. Here's the summary. I'm a firm believer in when you read, you should take notes. And usually I do that. I actually did this for chapter one. Um, so I'm also a firm believer in trying to read from beginning to end cover, um, kind of read the introduction. And actually in the introduction, he had a good poem. We actually recited this poem in I think like eighth grade. It was by Robert Frost, The Road Not Taken. And two roads diverged in the yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both. But anywho, that was a pretty dope, a pretty dope excerpt that he put in there. But I ain't gonna keep you for long. Chapter one. Chapter one was entitled, The Rich Don't Work For Money. He also calls it lesson one because he, what he says, Robert Kiyosaki says that this book is more like a, this book is more like a workbook. So you work through it, you, it's, at the end of the chapter, it was actually questions and things that you had to answer. So. The, the first lesson, chapter one, is entitled Lesson One, The Rich Don't Work For Money. So pretty much, just a little background on chapter one. Chapter one goes into his childhood. And in his childhood, um, you know, he was, it's kind of like zoning for schools. And when you zone for schools, you know, you're only allowed to go to certain schools or whatever. Um, like me. I stayed in between Denver Elementary in Memphis and Georgia Hills Elementary, but my zone was where my house faced forward, even though the closer school actually was Denver, I was zoned for Georgia Hills Elementary. So nevertheless, Robert, along with one of his friends, Mike, was zoned to this school. And then this school had some less fortunate kids, which was Robert himself and which he thought his friend Mike was less fortunate. And it had the rich uppity kids. So one time it was like this little party. So this dude, little snobby kids, like, ah, y'all, y'all can't come to my party. Y'all are the poor people. So Robert's like, dang. Excuse me, I think I got something fuzzy on my eye. Ugh. So anyway, Robert's like, dang, we can't come to your party. So he's like, no, you can't come to my party because you're poor. So Robert's like, hey man, you telling me I'm poor? How you? Well, Robert really didn't come back. Robert thought he was, he knew he was poor. So, rich dad, poor dad. It comes from, Robert says he has a rich dad and he has a poor dad. And here's how. So, Robert goes home and say, hey dad, 
uh, can you teach me how to make some money? His dad's like, well, Robert, you need to find a way to make some money because, you know, just go out and do it. So Robert and his friend Mike, they come up with this grand idea that they was going to collect some of the old toothpaste tubes from neighbors of the neighborhood. And because toothpaste, to toothpaste tubes, tongue, Toothpaste tubes didn't come um, in the little plastic that they do now. They came in like, they came in like, I think he was saying like lead casing. So anyway, they go, they collect these tubes. Robert's mom, they collect the tubes, put them in the house. Robert's mom was like, hey, y'all need to get these tubes up out my crib because I ain't got time. So, you know, they go outside. Robert dad pulls up. So, he sees them. They got this assembly line going. What they're doing is basically taking the tubes, melting them down, pouring it into like this old milk cartons, and essentially they're making something in the form of a nickel. Robert Dad sits down with him like, hey, 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 hey. I'm happy you going and trying to make some work for yourself, but brother, I don't think this is the right thing to do because it's counterfeiting. It's illegal. Like, I don't want my kid to be making making illegal money. I don't want my kids to be making illegal money. So, nevertheless, they're back at square one. So, hmm, back at square one, you say? So that's when Robert, let, let's, Robert says out loud, kind of like, well, I guess we're gonna remain poor or whatever. We won't know how to make money. So that's when Robert's dad like, hey, you guys, his poor dad, his poor dad, he say, hey, you guys wanna go out and Y'all want to know about how to make money? Go ask Mike's dad. Mike is his homeboy. So Mike is considered his homeboy. They the first partner. They like, whatever. We trying to get to this bread because we sick of people saying we're poor. So nevertheless, they go out. And that's when they go to Mike's house and they like, yo, my dad. They like, hey, can you teach us about money? So my dad is rich dad. So poor dad is Robert's dad and rich dad is Mike's dad. See, background on poor dad. Poor dad, Robert's dad, actually went to school, actually got some great degrees, but he, he works for the school, but Robert dad, yeah, all he knows is let's try and get tenured, let's try and play it safe, and it just seems as if with money, though money is, the pay is good, it seems as if like they're always somehow just barely keeping the flow. Then you have Mike's dad. I mean, yeah, Mike's dad. Mike's dad and Robert's dad, they actually use the same kind of accounting or whatever, or financial advisor. And from that, Robert's dad knows that Mike's dad knows a lot. Mike's dad has like two warehouses, three restaurants, um, this business, that business. But his dad never finished eighth grade. Wow. Never finished eighth grade, but you're like this. Never finished eighth grade, but you're up here. Robert's dad went to college on college on college, but he's, I would say, I wouldn't say he's down here. I would say he's down here only because he's not doing the right things with his money. So whatever. Now you know who rich dad is. Now you know who poor dad is. Know a little background of him. So now they're talking to rich dad. So rich dad, Mike's, his friend's Mike's dad, he says, hey, look, I'll teach y'all how to make some money. I just need y'all to show up to my store, show up to one of the stores and help me so-and-so, and I'll pay y'all 10 cents. Now it was back in the 1950s, so 10 cent, uh, as weird as it sounds, 10 cent actually was a lot of money. Uh, we know now with the inflation and economy, blah, 10 cent, boy, uh, 10 cent. So, nevertheless, they go to the store, and they had to meet every Saturday. Now, here's the thing, Robert, of course, like everybody, oh, man, I got to give up my Saturday to get some. So the dad tells him, hey, you the one who said you want to learn about money, right? Don't you want to learn about money? So just that. He agrees to it. Okay, I'll be there every Saturday. So they go. About three Saturdays, they making 10 cents. So I'm like, dang, we working for three hours, only getting 10 cents? So Mike's like, oh man, I mean, not Mike, Robert's like, oh man, 
this ain't what I signed up for. So of course he goes home, talks to his poor dad and says, oh, dad, you know, we just make it 10 cents. I can't even play my softball, baseball games and blah, blah, blah. So of course, poor dad says, well, any person with education and entitled and kind of feels now, he says, hey, I think you should demand more. So Robert's like, hey, I guess I do deserve more. So you know what Robert did? Do you really want to know what Robert did? That Robert got bold. Robert went back to Mike's dad's house. He was like, yo, I need to talk to you. Mike's dad, okay, take a seat. Mike's dad had an office in the house, and of course he had multiple employees coming to see him. And Mike just, Robert just said, he just said, and he was pissed. He was like, yo. He was like, this ain't it. So, he goes back, and he's like, yo, I need to talk to you. So, he finally gets his chance after waiting and waiting. He finally gets his chance to step into the office. Now, might I add that Mike wanted to quit because he was already like, yo, I'm not getting paid. This is whack. I didn't sign up for this. I wanted this traditional method. And Mike's dad is not that traditional teacher. So, after he got fed up, he told his boy Mike first at the store, which Mike said, ha, ha, ha. My dad said once you got to this point, he wanted me to tell you to go and meet him. So, at this point of Robert sitting in the house waiting to meet with his dad, his blood is boiling. So, he get in the office, and he's big, he's bad, he's bold. He's nine years old. But he's bold. So, he talks to him. He said, like, yo, you ain't paying me enough. This ain't what I signed up for. What do we have going on? So he's like, yeah, man. He's like, this is a lesson. And that's when the lesson started to take, take, take fold. So Mike's dad is like, yeah, you should be fed up. And it's good that you're, you're asking about this. So he says, hey, I'm not the conventional teacher. You said you wanted to be taught. You have to be willing to learn. So he says, hey, guess what? I want you to go back to the store and them, they, they hash it out and it's going for a while. They hash it out. He's like, but look, he agrees. Robert agrees. I'm going to go back to the store and I'm going to work for you. But this time, there's a catch. This time, he's not getting paid. So you telling me he went and talked to his poor dad and his poor dad said, go and ask for more money. He goes to ask for more money. And why is the lesson being taught as he wanted to? And then he ends up with no money. Damn. Ain't that about a... <clears throat> so the lesson in this is stop acting off of emotions. It's nobody's fault. So this was the bigger lesson that Mike's dad was trying to get across to him. Hey, it's going to be people. It's people that sit in these jobs all the time. And of course... They don't. They, they, they deserve more. They're worth more. But hey, they're comfortable. So Mike's dad challenges him, challenges the both of them. He says, hey, go and use your brain. Find a way. So on top of making no money, I still haven't got this lesson how I want it. And you want me to just, hmm, find a way. Use my brain. Hmm. So they did just that. You know what? He used, hold on, they used their brain. Robert and Mike used their brain. And you know how they did just that? They went to the store, and they was like, hmm. Robert had this infatuation with comic books. I guess any boy would back then. So they was getting the early, you know, Supermans and stuff. So Batmans. So anyway, Robert wasn't making his 10 cents, so he couldn't go get his comic books like he normally would did but he seen the lady at the store she was taking off the cover and putting the comic book somewhere she was like yo what are you doing with those comic books and she was like well i call the dude i take these off and i call this dude and this dude comes and he picks up these comic books so robert got smart him and mike they started talking he was like yo Rob." um he was like yo robert yo mike um how about we get these books? So the dude comes, he's like, hey, can Robert, they talk to him. He's like, yo, is it any way that we can keep these comic books? And the guy's like, 
sure you can keep the comic book under one condition you don't resell these comic books or give them away blase blase oh that's fine they didn't want it for that they go and they make sort of a library kind of like this one behind me they make this whole like archive of like comic books because what kid back then didn't want to read you know comic books or whatever so they go and do this and they get um see the um, my mistake one of their sisters to be like the librarian so she keeps tab on who comes in if they're paying their 10 cent so essentially they had this job going neighborhood kids around the neighborhood they was going they used their brains to make money hmm now this is after they had to have a hard listening stop running on emotion emotions only get you so far so they use their brain to come up with this gorgeous this great idea to make money they was making their money work for them because guess what they weren't even at the store like that at their little comic book collection so the guys was coming in paying their 10 cent she was keeping a good tab they was making like nine dollars and fifty cents a week and they did it for about i guess he said like three months i want to say but they was getting money. They was getting money. But it all fell apart because one guy, of course it's some kid that wants to be a big bully, comes, fight breaks out in the crib. So Mike's pop is like, yo, shut it down. This is it. Back to the drawing board. So that's the summary of chapter one. Chapter one entitled The Rich don't work for money, right? Let me double check that. Let me see. Yep. <clears throat> Chapter one, lesson one, entitled, The Rich Don't Work for Money. The poor and the middle class work for money. The rich have money work for them. Essentially, the first lesson was, I would say it was pretty much mastered by them two. But, um, this one, this first chapter really teaches you a lot about you gotta take your emotions out of the game. You gotta think logically. But the biggest thing is you have to think. You have to quiet all your thoughts. And in today's time, I know it's difficult, but you have to quiet all your thoughts, all the negative thoughts, all the negative nuances of the world. And you gotta think. And a lot of people do speak highly on entrepreneurship but you must think you got to find your niche and these guys I feel like even after getting knocked down they got back up and they end up finding something that could work and sometimes that's all you need you're gonna fail we're all gonna fail me personally I invite failure why because it means I'm doing something a lot of people are afraid of failure because it feels like oh man now somebody can Screw what anybody has to say. You are responsible for you. So, hey, I'm going to get on this live thing and I'm going to give you all more details. Um, hopefully, y'all can make it to the book club, the book club live, and we can talk some more into it. I got some great questions and some key points. So, stay tuned. I'm right there with you. Let's get Hefe. I read, you read, we read. We make the world a better place. How about that? Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Chapter 1. It's in the books.